Hi, I'm Terry Kimball, President and CEO here at the Chandler Chamber, and I have with me today Leah Marquez Peterson. Thank you so much for being here. No, thank you for having me. So Leah is running for re-election with the Arizona Corporation Commission. So um, that is a statewide position. So why do you want to run for re-election? Now, it's interesting, as, as you may know, I'm, I live in the Tucson area, so I'm the only commissioner based outside of the Phoenix area. I've been serving for about five years on the commission, have really enjoyed my role reaching out to folks throughout the state, rural and urban, uh, and just being able to represent ratepayers and talk about the, how important it is to have reliable energy at the most affordable utility rates. So I'm running to continue that. We have two terms in the commission, and, and uh, so term limits. So this would be my final term that I could serve and really hope that I uh, receive that support and I'm able to move forward. Well, I appreciate that and thank you for sharing that with us. So um, let's talk a little bit about what do you feel is the biggest challenge facing Arizona from the Corporation Commission standpoint within the next four to five years? Right now, what we're seeing so much is the incredible energy demand that's facing Arizona. We've seen residential population growth in all different sectors of the state, but a lot of economic development projects. So you see data centers, semiconductor industries, uh, manufacturing facilities, all wanting to come primarily, a lot of those, into Maricopa County. So you've got the burden on APS and SRP and Tucson Electric Power when they land in that area and, and others on how to best serve these companies. A lot of them have their own clean energy goals. Our utilities have set voluntary energy goals, which I'm supportive of, uh, but it's how they find that energy demand. Um, so that means in communities throughout the state, we need additional resources. And I support kind of an all of the above approach to that, whether it's nuclear or natural gas or solar or wind or hydroelectric, whatever it takes uh, to meet that demand. Great. So, um, the Corporation Commission is very, very important for um, company growth here in Arizona. And here at the Chandler Chamber, we represent about 172,000 employees here in Chandler. So we're a, a large chamber. So how will you, if reelected, how will you continue to foster a positive working relationship with the chamber and the business community? That's a good question. So I, I come from that same world. I formerly ran the Tucson Hispanic Chamber. We had about 1,800 member businesses, um, so one of the largest Hispanic chambers in the country, mm -hmm. and very proud to be there for almost 10 years. Formerly, I also owned small businesses, so I owned a chain of gas stations and convenience stores and a business brokerage firm in Tucson. So I really relate to the issues that are impacting, I think, so many of your members and their employees. Um, I've made it a point since being appointed back in 2019, then elected statewide in 2020, to continue having conversations, whether it's coming out to your events, coming out to different chambers, Kiwanas, Rotaries, groups throughout, industry groups really throughout the state, or doing videos that talk about votes I've recently taken, or doing newsletters that define a lot of the different work we do. Um, I realize that uh, the commission's kind of wonky. People don't know the scope of the work that we're focused on. We regulate almost 400 utilities. So we're absolutely impacting your members and your members' employees at the commission. So it's important that they know who they can reach out to, that you know who the five commissioners are. And I know you do because you, you work with us frequently. But the work that can be done uh, if we collaborate and, and we communicate better. So let's talk a little bit. You talked a little bit about it, but can you expand upon why, how you have adequately um, prepared yourself for this position? Because it's not, it's a lot more than just getting signatures and putting your name on the ballot. Right. No, so interestingly, um, I was appointed to this position because there was a vacancy. Andy Tobin had moved on, uh, and Governor Ducey reached out after I'd run for Congress in Tucson. I won my primary but lost the general election and decided to leave the chamber world and to do something different, kind of left without a net. I had a call from the governor's office who appointed me to this role, and I knew a bit about it, but not the breadth of the work that we do at the commission. It's been very exciting to learn, um, especially in campaign season in 2020, running during a pandemic. Um, someday I'll write a book about that, <laughs> I don't know how, how strange that was. But realizing that not only are we working with families and businesses that are um, tied to these monopolistic companies, right? You didn't get a choice when you moved to your home or your business. We told you, here's the territory for this electric company, this gas company, water utility, whatever it may be. 
Um, so I've learned a lot about those industries. Now I'm co-chairing a nuclear task force that talks about small modular nuclear, which is really, I think, of the future someday when it's more affordable. I'm vice chair of a water utility um, national committee that talks about the challenges we're facing across the country related to water utilities. And in Arizona, that's almost 350 of our utilities we're regulating. Most of them are small, mom and pop. So again, very similar to the small businesses I worked with at the chamber. Um, I think preparation for this kind of role is, is tough. You kind of learn on the job. You work with families and communities and businesses in every corner of the state. And that's really how I've prepared. Um, as a candidate for the role in 2024, a little different, right? Because we're not in a pandemic, thank goodness. But it is, again, being in all 15 counties, going to events and meeting with people, mm -hmm. getting the signatures we need, getting the $5 donations because we're running as clean election candidates, the, the three of us that are on a slate together. Uh, and that's actually very helpful because we do get out and talk to people in their homes and at their businesses. And now we're down to our, our final couple months and uh, looking forward to moving forward in this. Great. So let's switch gears a little bit, and I'd love to know your opinion on energy efficient roles. And do you think that they should be a priority here in Arizona? Oh, good question. I think energy efficiency, weatherization, whatever that may take, should absolutely be a priority, as should water conservation and all we're doing for limited resources. Um, I think the, the real question is, should we be subsidizing energy efficiency, which is what rules would bring? From my perspective, as I have voted on items, it's all about reliable energy at the most affordable rates. And what, how I translate that to mean is we need to make sure we're not cost shifting one group of customers from another. As an example, if you have an electric vehicle, wonderful. Those without EVs shouldn't be subsidizing you with an EV. Same kind of thing with energy efficiency. We need to educate, we need to promote those as great tools. Um, they're kind of considered in the energy world like virtual power plants. If we can uh, embrace a lot of the energy efficiency in different types of models, demand response programs, we may not have to build that natural gas peaker in the future because we've been able to limit the use of that energy. So I think it absolutely has a role, but I think we need to be careful because if we mandate things through rules, you'll see unintended consequences of much higher utility rates. Great, great points you ensure the cost of utilities remains affordable for everybody? So as a commissioner, what most people may not realize is we have access to full books and records. So we are setting the rates, the programs, uh, any special pilot programs we're trying to do, whatever it may be, it's coming before the commission. We're approving their financing. Uh, they are spending money on capital investments and it comes before us, usually within a couple years, and they're seeking cost recovery. So how do we manage all that and determine that it's affordable utility rates? Constitutionally, the commission's created and our, we must be setting just and reasonable rates. That means that we are looking at a rate case application, as an example, let's say APS recently came before us, and we take like a scalpel to it. We start going through line item by line item. They're prepared, providing us information, but in this last APS rate case, we cut more than $200 million out of that rate application because we were concerned about the impact to utility rates and felt that those particular programs didn't need to be structured the way, the way they were. So that's how we do it. It's, it's, uh, it's item by item. It's really studying. It's making sure you have uh, folks around you that have uh, you know, engineers or attorneys or so on looking through the various um, components of a rate case. And again, we regulate 400 utilities. So that's about Amazing. 40 to 50 rate cases a year. Wow. So let's talk a little bit. Do you think that Arizona should maintain a diverse energy portfolio? Absolutely. I think we only have to look west to California to see what happens when you don't. And California has made decisions that have impacted its grid and put Californians' lives at risk, really. Um, if you look at the rolling blackouts that they have uh, encountered, it's because of an over-dependence on renewable energy. I support renewable energy also, but it has to be a balanced approach with a diverse energy resource mix. What that means is in Arizona, about 30% of our energy currently comes from the Palo Verde nuclear power plant. What a great asset we have. If we could do more of that, we would. It's just very expensive. Mm -hmm. We get about 27% from natural gas. We still have coal plants. We have three still operating. We have incredible growth in utility scale solar and battery and wind, hydroelectric. 
and new technologies we haven't even seen yet that are being um, identified and, and studied. So we need a diverse energy mix because we have to have reliable energy. And that's not just a campaign talking point. If we, have, if we don't have reliable energy, you'll have energy outages. Mm -hmm. You could have air conditioning not working. You have vulnerable people living in places where if they don't have air conditioning, it could be life or death, especially in some places throughout Arizona. So I think we absolutely need a diverse energy mix. Great, great information there. So I know we've had a short amount of time and we've kind of had a, a variety of um, questions all across the board. Is there anything else that I may not have asked you, you feel is important for our, peop our people here in Chandler to know? Or is there something else about you that you feel that they need to know as well? Um, they might find it interesting that I'm also the past chairwoman of our commission. I served for a couple years, 2020 to 2022. And my priorities while being chairwoman were really about um, transparency. We passed a code of ethics right away that dealt with how we lead with integrity, how we be more transparent related to campaign finance and dark money rules, uh, how we would run as clean election candidates. And that was just the beginning. I think we could do more in that area. Um, I also was very proud to launch an energy reliability summit because of concerns with California's rolling blackouts and the impact on Arizona utility rates. Um, but I, I do believe we have more work to do in terms of communicating and educating folks that the commission exists, that we regulate private investor-owned utilities, and the impact to folks throughout the state. Uh, and I want to continue doing that, hopefully, if I'm able to serve another term. That's great. Great information. Leah Marquez-Peterson, um, running for re-election for the Arizona Corporation Commission. Thank you so much Thank for joining you, Terry. me. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it.